Hi everyone! Today's lesson is going to continue with inequalities and we're going to be looking at inequalities in the real world and verbal statements with inequalities. But first, let's start with a do now. So in your notebooks, I would like you to write down these two word statements. X is greater than or equal to 17 and X is less than 35. For both of these, I would like you to write the inequality that would match that verbal statement and then try to graph it on a number line. So pause the video and when you're done you can click play to check your work. Okay so let's go over our do now. Number one, x is greater than or equal to 17. This is what x is greater than or equal to 17 looks like. So now on our number line we know we need to have the number 17 somewhere in the middle and then put the numbers that are bigger than and smaller than it right around there. So your numbers should number line should look something like this. If I want to show x is greater than or equal to 17, first of all, am I circling it or coloring it? I'm coloring in the circle because it can be equal to 17. Greater than 17. That would be 18 and 19 and all the numbers in this direction. So this is what your graph should look like. For number 2, x is less than 35. Your inequality should look like this. That says x is less than 35. And the numbers on your number line should be something like this. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So now when we graph it, x is less than 35. It cannot be equal to 35, so we don't color it in. We only circle 35. And less than would be 34, 33, and all of these numbers. So x could be any of those numbers lower than 35. If you need more help with um, problems like this, go rewatch yesterday's video. It will help you. So now today, we are going to be looking at verbal statements and how we can turn them into inequalities. So, for example, the symbol, this symbol right here, it means greater than. But greater than are not the only words used for that symbol. We could also use the words more than, over, exceeds, and above. Here's an example. Actually, let me grab a highlighter too. That might help. I want to exceed the most points I have scored in a game, which is 28. So now I want to write an algebraic statement, an inequality that represents what I just read. So if I want to exceed 28 points, does that mean I want greater than 28 points or less than 28 points? I want greater than 28 points. So I need P to be greater than 28. How do I write that? We write P is greater than 28. Here's my less than symbol. Other terms or phrases that could mean less than are fewer, under, below, things like that. So to receive, here's my example. To receive a children's discount at the movies, you must be under 13 years old. Now I'm going to use the variable A to represent age. So if your age needs to be under 13, that means your age needs to be less than 13. So our statement would be A is less than 13. Greater than or equal to. Some key phrases that we use for this symbol, now this is important, so I'm actually going to highlight this. At least and minimum. If you see those phrases, that probably means you're going to be using the symbol greater than or equal to. Let's read our example. Your essay must be at least five pages long. And we are going to have the variable P represent the page numbers. So if you need an essay that's at least five pages long, you can't write a four-page essay. You can't write a three-page essay. That's not enough. You need to have 
five pages or more. You can have a six page essay, a seven page essay. So you're gonna need P to be bigger than five or equal to five. Five pages would be okay. So our symbol is going to be P is greater than or equal to five because our essay needs to be five pages or more. And then for our last symbol, less than or equal to, a couple very important key phrases that mean less than or equal to would be limit, maximum, capacity, or at most. All of those phrases usually mean less than or equal to. So let's read our example. John has a spending limit of $300. Now we need to write a statement for that and we're going to let S represent the amount spent. So, okay, how much can John spend? If he has a limit of $300, is John allowed to spend more than $300? No. Is John allowed to spend exactly $300? Yes. Is he allowed to spend less than $300? Yeah, if he wants to. He doesn't have to spend all his money. So that means for this problem, John needs to spend less than or equal to $300 because this is his limit. He can't go over this much money. Okay, so I've actually also included this chart on Google Classroom for you so you can reference it as you go through the next few examples. So right now there are four problems here, four verbal statements, and I'd like you to by yourself Pause the video and try writing an inequality that represents each verbal statement. Write it down in your notebook. And when you are done, you can click play and check your answers. Okay, so the first one says the speed limit keyword is 70 miles per hour. Well, we know that limit means you can't go over that. Right? If you go over 70, a cop might pull you over and give you a ticket. So S is my speed, 70 is my magic number, but I need my speed to be less than 70 miles an hour. Are you allowed to drive exactly 70 miles an hour? Yes. So S is less than or equal to 70. Problem number two, you must be at least 16 years old to drive a car. And we're going to let A represent age. So I have A, my magic number is 16. So you need to be at least 16. Are you allowed to drive a car for only 10 years old? No, you can't be under 16. You have to be over 16. So A has to be greater than or equal to 16 because you're allowed to be 16 and drive a car you get your permit when you're 16 so you have to be 16 or older that is our answer a is greater than or equal to 16. the third one to ride a roller coaster the rider must be over 58 inches tall we're going to let h represent height 58 is my magic number if you have to be over 58, that means you have to be greater than 58 inches. So H has to be greater than 58. And then for the last one, the capacity of a concert hall is 500 people. And we're going to let P equal people. So P for people, 500 because that's my magic number. Now what does capacity mean? Capacity means that the concert hall, hall can hold up to 500 people. Can the concert hall hold more than 500 people? No, there's not enough seats. The concert hall has to hold less than 500 people or equal to 500 people because that's my capacity. So P, the amount of people, has to be less than or equal to 500. It can't go over 500 because we won't have enough seats for everybody. So those are my four answers. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please let me know. I would be happy to help. And use the chart that I gave you on the other page, and I also put it on Google Classroom, 
use that to help you with your assignment today, okay? Thanks, bye.